This is the Light Phone 2, and is it the world's most productive phone? Today we're going to give you a full review of this e-ink display premium minimal phone in this video. Hello there, my name is Francesco D'Alessio, welcome to Keep Productive. We dive into plenty of productivity tools and resources, and we've also reviewed e-ink display experiences in the past, like the Remarkable 2, Remarkable 1, and we're planning many more. This is our second major device to cover e-ink displays, and I'm eager to dive into it in today's video. I've had this Light Phone 2 for about two weeks now, and I've been testing out some of the core functionality around it, and very simply, it's a premium minimal phone designed to do some of the core things your phone should. Phone calls, messaging, alarm, calculator, podcasts, music, and settings giving you some of the basic abilities instead of all of the functionality that a typical Android or iOS phone can do. So let's start with design and experience so far. Now this phone is a lot smaller than what you would see with a typical iPhone these days. An iPhone will probably come to about here and it was a dramatically different size. As you can see, putting it to my face, I felt like the guy from Zoolander with his little phone. It was quite weird for the first couple of days in using it, but I quite like the form factor. Now you can buy accessories for this, a $15 screen protector and a $25 rear um, protector for the case and it allows you to keep it more uh, protected. But all in all, I like the form factor of this. It doesn't have some of the design quality and build of the Remarkable 2 or say an iPad or an iPhone, but it doesn't have a bad design at all. It's got a lock up the top here, a 3.5 millimeter a headphone jack and a micro USB for being able to um, charge stuff into a USB B, which was a little bit painful. Wish it had a sort of upgraded uh, one there because we're sort of heading towards USB C anyway. And on the side there, it's got a toggle to see the menu and volume keys too. You can insert your SIM card here. And in terms of the build quality, it's pretty good. I found the back was a bit of a fin fingerprint magnet and sort of started to look a bit like grubby near the end of the week, which was a bit weird, but nothing, no problems. It seemed reliable um, and uh, I haven't had any drops of it so far. So that's good news. So in terms of the software, this phone is obviously very different to what a typical phone is. With an iPhone, you can access social media, everything like that, and be distracted beyond belief. Uh, this phone goes against the grain by providing you with a phone, messaging, and as I mentioned, the other stuff, but it tries to bring a phone down to the core elements of what you need. Now, I really like this experience. Being able to take it away into a park and just be able to relax and know that I don't have to, that temptation of checking social media and also I can just get calls and messages through it was really nice. Although there were some drawbacks that I'll talk about near the end of this video from my own experience of using it. So let's talk a little bit about battery life. If you were using this for a typical day for phone calls, messaging, I got to about 29% at the end of a full day using it, which isn't too bad. I made a few calls, I made a few texts, I used the alarm in the morning, I used a little bit of the personal hotspot in the afternoon, but if you're using the personal hotspot, that will wipe the battery pretty fast, much faster than a typical phone, but you might not be using that as your core experience. Now, the phone calls were pretty decent. 90% of the time, it worked perfectly, and I had no problem with latency of the call, quality of the sound, the speaker, and being able to use it was pretty easy. I thought I'd have more difficulty because my mouth is further away from the recorder or the microphone, and I found no problems with that. Everyone heard me perfectly. Um, Becca even said it was a nine out of 10 call experience. I did have some issues with Steve who is editing this video and I called him, my number came up as no name and he wasn't able to accept the call. And when he accepted one of the calls, it actually wouldn't come through. I heard him, but I couldn't speak. Could be a carrier issue, could, a, could be that, I don't know, but 90% of the time it did work well. So you do get messaging on this. The messaging is not great. That's one of my drawbacks. It's designed for you not to message. You got to be using this as least as possible. And for the core features, 
phone is the most important thing, maybe not for the previous generation. But the one thing I found was you have to turn it sideways and there's a tiny little keyboard. Uh, it looked like I was trying to play a tiny little um, Game Boy Advance SP, I think they made like a mini edition. Um, Steve, can you show it on the screen uh, what I'm trying to talk about? You know what I'm talking about. And it was just so difficult to be able to text. There was a voice typing function and that was okay to use, but it did get it wrong a couple of times. Could be that it might be set on an American version and my British twang may have caused issues, but I didn't like that. It, the messaging was very hard to do, but that's sort of a good thing. It's meant for like quick messaging back versus like long lengthy messaging back um, in the sort of branding or advertising. They want you to have more moments, more experiences with this. So in terms of productivity, when I use this, I felt freer. This was a nice experience to use. I took it to the park, I took it to the coffee shop, and using it was nice. Being able to make calls was simple, and I found it to be a pretty decent experience because it didn't give me the temptations, it didn't give me some distractions to go to, and it allowed me to use the core functions of a phone. I'll talk about that near the end. Argument is, can we just do that with our phone? But one of the things I found was a major problem was not having a camera. If this puppy had a camera, it would be a lot nicer because I was in the park with Otto, enjoying the moment, and I was like, oh, that means it was something so cute or something so funny. And I was like, ready to snap it. And I was like, don't have a phone. There's no camera on it, is there? So obviously that was a big drawback um, to the sort of experience. However, when I went to a coffee shop, I used a Remarkable 2 and this as my sort of phone, and it was lovely. The afternoon of offline productivity was really cool. And I did find it much more freeing. So when it comes to the pros and cons of this, I love the alarm tones on this in the morning. <laughs> I shouldn't start with that. I like the phone call abilities were really good. I like the form factor. I like the personal hotspot was worked really well, although it did drain your battery pretty fast. Um, I liked some of the basic abilities this phone offered. However, for the high price, it seemed quite a lot of money just for that phone. But I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing about this is that you would have to change your lifestyle to use this phone. Mac Diavella covered this in his review of it. The QR codes and the directions are difficult to do because the directions make it difficult when you are driving to be able to see in a small screen in the ink display. And QR codes, if somebody sends you an Amazon QR code and you've got to try and print it out on an every or a Royal Mail thing, bloody nightmare, because QR codes won't show up on this. But it's meant to be doing that. You have to change your lifestyle around it. And there's an argument. The first thing I did is when I brought it to a coffee shop, one of the coffee shop baristas said, why don't you just use your phone and not be distracted by social media? And I thought that was a very genuine question. And of course, you can do that. Like that, like you could take all social media off your phone and use the core functions of your phone. But this is trying to remove all of that and any temptation that's there. But you'd have to change all of your routines and habits. Facebook Messenger, I use that quite a lot for video calls. Can't do that here. Camera, I take lots of camera photos. Can't do that here. I feel like the world's moved on so much to what we define as a basic experience that you could probably use this if you're a hardcore offliner or you're somebody that wants to buy this as a subsidiary purchase and use this in experiences. Like if I was going to have a chill out time in the park or go out to the forest and go for a walk or do something very offline like, I would bring this with me. But if I was looking to take photos or do a video call um, or go on a trip, I'd probably bring my phone. So this feels like an additional experience to your lineup, but only for those who commit to it, commit to the core use of a phone. Very interesting piece of technology though. I really like using it and I find it to be a pretty decent one at that. It's reliable, it seemed decent, but you have to change your lifestyle for it. <laughs> Anyway, folks, thank you so much for stopping by in this Lightphone 2 review. If you enjoyed it, please do hit subscribe and do comment below with your experience if you've used a Lightphone 2 and how you're getting on with it. I love these sort of technologies, these offline productivity technologies, and I really think it's an interesting topic right now. And I hope you do too. So if you do, do subscribe, like this video if you found it useful, and I'll see you all very soon. Thank you very much, folks. Cheerio.